Hey, good morning, Nisi and Maya. This is our weekend coding project. Uh, in this project, we are going to create an iPhone app that computes for the area of a triangle. Let's say you can enter the base, let's say 155 units. And the height is, let's say, 45. Click on the Calculate the Area of the Triangle button, and you will get the answer. It says the area of a triangle with a base of 155 units and a height of 45 units is 122.5 square units. And this is computed by using the formula area equals 1 half times the base times the height. So how are we going to create an iPhone app? like this that you can install in your device if you have a device you can go to product destination and then you connect your iPhone to your MacBook and then that app can be saved in your iPhone or if uh, our app is Beautiful enough, we can upload that in the app stores for your friends to download. Or we can also put that app in our website and other people can also download your app as long as they trust that our app has no malicious contents or viruses. So I'm going to show you how to create this app from scratch. So what I'm going to do is I'll close this first. And we are going to create that app from scratch. So assuming that you already have the Xcode installed in your MacBook, open that Xcode, and then uh, go to this one, create a new Xcode project. We are going to select a single view application. Click Next. For the project of our, for the name of our project, we can call this M and N calculator. And then for your organization, in, in my case, I just put my name, but when you do it, you can change it with your name. And for the organization identifier, my website name is assistant.org. Apple is using the reversed domain notation. So instead of assistant.org, they put it org.assistant and then period, the name of our app, which we call M and let's say calculator. Calculator. Okay. Then the language is Swift. Then do not check anything here. Click next. And then click create. Now, when this uh, window open, you can see the name here, the bundle identifier. Just leave them as default. And then here, you will uh, decide whether the app can be open in portrait mode, upside down, landscape right, or landscape landscape left. You can also uncheck them if you want the orientation to be only portrait. And then at the left panel, we call this as the navigator panel. You can see the names of the files here. The project is MNN calculator. There, there is an app delegate that Swift. For now, just ignore this file. This is the view controller that Swift, and this is the main story that board. The main story that board is where you edit the design of your app. So this one looks like an iPhone, and the view controller that Swift is where you edit the code. So let's start designing our app. The, the middle portion of our 
screen is what we call as the editor panel. And the right side, this part, is what we call as the utility panel. So to start editing our app, we, we are going to click here for the library. Let's drop an image view here. This image view is where we are going to place the picture of the triangle in, in our app. And then at the top, we are going to put a label here. So I'll click here again on the library, then type label, and then drag that label above the image view. And then when you see that blue guideline, that indicates that we are at the middle of the screen. So release it. And then you can stop typing. Double click and type. Let's call this M and N area of triangle calculator. Then let's center it. And then we are going to drop here the two text boxes. So click here, type text box, or just text, you will see it. And then we are going to design this. Go to the utility panel and click on this part that says attribute inspector in the attribute inspector that's where we design our object so this object is a text field it says here placeholder you can put a placeholder let's say we say enter the base then you can see now here that there is a placeholder enter the base. Let's also change the background of our app. So click anywhere outside any of these objects. So let's click somewhere here. And then you can change the background color. Let's say that's the background color that we like. You can adjust this length. And then we will add another text box for the height text field. And go to the inspector, att attribute inspector. We can place a placeholder, enter the height. If you want to center the, the text values there click here okay now we want to put here a button such that when your user clicks on the button it can display the answer in a text field uh, in, uh, in another label at the bottom of that text uh, of that button so click here click button a uh, type button and then drag that button to your canvas and then double click to change the name let's say calculate if you want to put some uh, background color you can go here then select the background color you like. You can change the text color. You can change the size. Or you can change the font name. So you can select any of these. Let's say that's the one you like. Now we need a label that will show our answer here. So click here again. 
type label and then let's adjust the number of lines to let's say six lines to show the <coughs> sentence that we are going to write here and then uh, center it also so that's our design we can adjust some of our objects Now the question is, where is the image here? If you look at the left panel here, there's a folder that's named assets.xassets. That is where you are going to save your images. So let's click on that. And I already have an image that I downloaded from the internet that we are going to use as our image. Yeah, just drag whatever image you have there, drag to this area. Uh, there is a 1x, 2x, and 3x. The 1x are the sizes for the, the older version of the iPhone, let's say iPhone 5, iPhone 4, iPhone 3. And then the 2x are the sizes for let's say iPhone 7s plus iPhone 8 plus and then the 3x are for those high resolution newer versions of iPhones so we can also drag our icon to the 2x or to the 3x but usually you are going to design different sizes of icons or images with uh, the 3x containing more pixels than the 1x so it's it depends on your design now let's go back to the main storyboard we are going to insert here the image so if you click here again on the attribute inspector at the very top click this triangle this arrow and then this is the image that we save here in the X assets. Remember, we call it icon 50, 512. And when we click here, click, select this one. This is now the icon. And it's now saved in our placeholder for the image. In order to preview how our project looks like, you can click on this triangle to run and build your application. Notice that we have a problem. In iPhone 7, our app looks centered. But in iPhone 7 Plus, it is no longer it's no longer centered. So we need to apply what we call as the auto layout so that whatever is the device used by your user your app still look centered and adjust to whatever device and orientation your user is using so in order to do that we are going to do some layout adjustment And we call that as auto layout. So let's go to our main storyboard again. We can hide this part by clicking on this. So we have more space. We can also hide this debug area by clicking on that. So what we are going to do is we can adjust the positioning by going to the this bo bottom portion for the auto layout so we want the spacing from the same area at the top to our label to be 58 pixel and then the left 
is 52 pixel and the right is 52 pixel. Now this part, we also want it to be centered, so let's make this 67 also. So 67 at the left, 67 at the right, and the space between this label and this image is 30 pixel. And check the constraint to margins. Then do the same thing for that. And then do the same thing for this text field. Click on the auto layout. The distance from the image to our text field is 39 pixel. And then we want to center it also. So 67 for both. The left and the right margins uncheck constraint to margins and then add those three constraints one two three constraints do the same thing here 67 also and the distance between these two text fields is eight pixels uncheck constraint to margins and then add then do the same thing for the button 16 pixel 152 152 and check here add and finally the label and check here 28 let's make them both 52 and then add now if we build our app in 7 plus in iPhone 7 or different sizes notice what will happen looks good this is an iPhone 7 this is an iPhone 8 plus so even if we are using different sizes of iPhone still both of them are centered now let's close this So we are now done designing the view of our app. The next part is creating the logic that will control how the app works when you enter the, let's say, the, the value of the height and the base and then show whatever is the calculated area. In order to do that, we are going to do some coding. If you look at this uh, tab here, you can see these two circles. We call that as the assistant editor. If you click on the assistant editor, you will see side by side the canvas containing the view or the design of your app and the, the part where you are going to enter your codes. So, the first thing that we need is to have a reference for the base value. So what I'm going to do is click on this. So what we now what we now need is to have a reference between the view and the code. This code is the view controller that Swift. So this controls the objects in our main story board. So what we're going to do now is click on this text field containing the value of the base. I click control and then at the same time control drag to this area after the declaration of the class. So just drop and then you you will give a name for that. The name is base text field. Notice that we start with a lower case and then for the next word we capitalize and then capitalize the next word and so on. We call this notation as the camel case notation. 
start with a small letter and then capitalize the first letter of every succeeding word. And then at the top, select Outlet. Outlet is a way for Swift to create a reference to whatever is the value of that object. And then select here UI text field, click Connect. So this is now our IB outlet reference to whatever is the value in this text field. Let's say later on you put a value here of let's say 12 as the value of the base. Then in our code, our reference for that is the base text field of type UI text field. Now you notice also in this notation that you have a colon and then a UI text field. The UI text field is what we call as the super class where our base text field will inherit some properties from. So you can think of the super class as the parent. And this base text field as the child that inherits whatever the parent's properties are. But we are going to talk about classes and inheritance later on. Now you can see also this exclamation point. The exclamation point is a notation in Swift in order for us to tell this, the compiler later on that this text field contains a value. It is not nil. There is a value. Because if there is no value in this, in this text field and we perform the calculation, then our program would crash because there is no number to be computed. And we would like to make sure that there is a value here and a way for us to tell the compiler that we are confident that there is a value is to put this notation exclamation point. And say, I am sure that the value is not nil. Otherwise, our program will crash. Now we're going to do the same steps for the second text field. Control and then drag. And then give it a name, height, height text field. Click Connect. And then the label. Control, drag and then call it answer label connect notice that there are circles here with a plus if i hover on that circle we will know which part of our design has reference or connection to this name so i hover here i hover on the next and then on the text. For the calculate, this is not an outlet. This is going to perform an action. What we're going to do is click control, drag, but not in this area, but just below here, before the last curly bracket. So drag it somewhere here, and then give it a name. We'll call it calculate button. And then notice that this is now action. Instead of outlet, we selected action. And the type is, it's a user interface button. It's a button. It's no longer a text field. And then the action will be triggered whenever the event is touch up inside. It's just a way for us to say, when the user touch inside, the area containing the, the, the button, then the action will be triggered. And then click Connect. And it is in this area, in this part between the open curly brace and the closing curly brace, where we are going to enter our formula. So this is now the logic that we are going to do. We are going to read whatever is the value 
of the base text field and then we are going to multiply it by whatever is the value here in the second text field and use the formula 1 half base times height so we are going to multiply by base and the height so let's put the comment here when I put two slashes this is a comment for me to remember what I'm doing but it's not affecting the code at all so I'm going to put the formula area of a triangle equals base one half one let's just put one half base times height so it doesn't do anything it's just a way for me to remember the formula so since I need the value of the base I will now declare let base equals so when I say let base let is a keyword for me to say the value is constant I can also say var base to show that the value is changing or it's a variable so for now when I click on this button I know there's only one value for the base and one value for the height so I can use the keyword let to declare a constant so let base be equal to what that should be equal to this base text field notice that if I type base there's already the base text field variable that we created here so just enter and then click that text to access the text property of this text field so meaning what is the value of this text field so base text field that text refers to the value inside the text field and then the, com the compiler is complaining uh, initialization of immutable base was never used consider replacing with whatever that what we're going to do is just put an exclamation point to assure the compiler that there is a value for that text field and then just ignore the warning for for now but notice also that the value here is a text and if you are going to do, perform some computation we cannot perform computation on a text value we perform computation on numbers so what we're going to do is we are going to cast or wrap this around a function that will convert that text value into something that is a number it could be an integer if I type int here I am saying that whatever is the value in the text field will be converted into an integer integers are whole numbers like 1 2 3 4 or negative whole numbers like negative 1 negative 2 negative 3 and so on including 0 but when we compute for the area of a triangle the base is not always a whole number it could be 12.5 13.5 negative or, or, or all positive uh, decimal number so integer is not the appropriate type here what we are going to do is instead of integer we are going to select another type which we call as double double is a double precision decimal number if you want to know more about double uh, the different types that we can choose from for numeric are integer float double integer are the numbers like one two three four five or the negative of those numbers the float are decimal numbers like 245.344 negative 455.344 and so on the double is similar to float only that this is double precision decimal so you can take any large decimal number for the double type 
So in this case, let's assume that we are going to enter very, very big decimal numbers. So we are using the double type for this data type. So we are done with the first part. We are going to do the same for the height. Let height equals double. The name is height text field. So type height. If you type several few letters of the height, it will show up here. So just select that and enter that text exclamation point. So we already accessed the value or the content of these two text fields. The next thing that we are going to do is perform the computation. So we now say let answer be equal to one half times the base times the height. So how do we write that? One half we can just write 0 0.5 times is star base we refer now to this constant base times the height. In other words, we are applying now the formula area is one half times the base and the base is the value of the text field base text field that that text and we are assuring the compiler that there is a value and then times the height. Now the compiler again is complaining. It says value of op optional type double must be unwrapped. When you say optional, this value could have a value or it could be nil, but our program will crash if there is no value and we can we click on calculate we are going to assure again the compiler that the base is not nil and the height is not nil by putting the exclamation point now the error is gone but there's still another warning because we are going to again cast this into a double double precision type. So whatever is the value here, the computation of one half times the base times height, that value type that is returned is of type double, meaning decimal number. And the value of this is assigned to this reference, which we call as the answer. So answer now holds whatever is the computed value here. And then how do we show this answer to the label? So we are now going to assign that display. So we'll say answer. We call this label. The reference is answer label. So we now say answer label and then the text property meaning whatever is the text value of this answer label is answer label that text that would be equal to this answer so we now say put in string uh, quotation mark the answer is and then backslash it's called escape character so we can insert this variable answer so what we are saying here is assign this text the answer is whatever is the computed value here to the display of this label and then period. Now let's build our app and see if this code is giving us the answer that we are expecting. So I'll click on let's build. 
Okay, let's check whether our program is working. So enter the base, let's say 123. Enter the height, let's say 165. Calculate, it says the answer is 10,147.5. Let's try a different value. Let's say 12. Let's say here, 18, calculate. The answer is 108.0. Now, we can do some improvement. We, when we change the number here, we want this answer to be erased also, and we want this 12 to be erased also, so that we'll start with a new, a new set of numbers. Also, we want to improve this so that if the user accidentally click on calculate but he forgot to put the height and the base values then the program will alert him to enter a valid number because right now if it's empty if i click on calculate the program would crash it just stops and we have a problem so in that case our user would be complaining uh, the program has bugs So to do that, let's do some improvement to our codes. So let's go to our main story board again. Click on the assistant editor so we can see them side by side. So first, we need to catch when the user entered the wrong So we can catch if the user is entering, an, let's say, put a, a letter here instead of a number or forgot to enter a number. So the way to do that is we are going to use the if then statement. This is how we do it. We say if base is not, not equal. So this, this are symbol for if the base is not equal, if the base is not equal to nil, so this our notation to say the base is not empty, meaning to say there is a value here. If the base is not empty, and our notation for and is double ampersand, and the height is not nil, then open curly brace then remove this and then put this inside that curly bracket so if the base is not nil and the height is not nil, in other words, both the base and the height contain value, then perform these operations. Otherwise, else, we now say display a message here. We display this is reference to us answer label so we display in the answer label that text our warning message we can say you did not enter a valid number okay so if there is a valid number here we will perform this computation otherwise we are going to display a message that you did not enter a valid number let's test if our code is working as 
we plan it to be. Okay, let's say I do not put a valid number. Let me click. And it's saying you did not enter a valid number. If I put a valid number, it gives you the answer. Now, there's still one problem. If I click here and I change this number, let's say 15, it has a different answer. What I want is whenever I click here, this answer should disappear so I can start with a fresh value. Okay, how are we going to do that? So you can see here, view did load. In the view did load, at the bottom of that, right at the very moment that our app loads in memory, we are going to hide this label first. But this, the reference to this label is answered label, so we can say answer label that is hidden So, the answer label is hidden equals true. Meaning, once we load the app, we want this answer label to be hidden. It's empty. So, we are going to put that. Once the, the user click on the calculate button, we want to show this label field. So, we click... Uh, answer label that is hidden is false so it's no longer hidden when the calculate button is pressed by the user so let's check if our program is working So let's put a value, let's say 15, 16. If you click calculate, the answer should show up here. Okay, the answer is 120. But when I click here, I want these two values in the text fields to be erased and this answer to be erased also. Let's click here. It's still not working. So we need to improve our code. Now no, let's click and drag. Control drag, I mean control drag here to create another function. And let's call that clear values. And the UI text field. And we're going to select here. Uh, did end on exit, editing change, editing did begin, touch cancel, touch down, touch repeat, touch enter, drag exit. So what we want to do is we are going to erase the value once we start editing. And that is did begin. So let's try that one. So when the editing did begin, we want this one, these two text fields to be empty and the label to be hidden. Let's select connect. So this text field has a reference of base text field. Yeah, inside this one base text field the text equals nil and then the height text field the text equals nil also and you want to hide the answer label and is hidden equals true. 
Let's check. Okay, well, notice that when I click here, automatically the values in the text field were cleared. Because when I click here, the values were cleared. Now, what other improvements we can do? Yeah, it says the answer is 153. What we can do is we can say the area of a triangle with a base of 17 units and a height of 18 units is 153 square units. So let's improve this message. Let's end. So let's go to that part where that says the answer is. So instead of saying the answer is answer, we can now say the area of a triangle with a base of and then escape parenthesis the variable base units and a height of escape then height parenthesis height units is the answer is square units. So what this say is that, let's make it bigger. The area of a triangle with a base of, and then the one that is escaped and put inside the parentheses refers to the value of this variable base. And what's the value of that base? Notice that the base, this one, is whatever is displayed in the text field. So in this sentence, this part of the program will display whatever is the value here. So this is a reference to the value of this text field. And then continue, units of a height of, and then inside this escaped value again is the reference to this height. And then continue, units is and then slash answer this variable answer is our computed value here and then square units so let's see how it looks like put any value let's say 16 12 okay the area of the triangle with a base of 16 in a height of 12 is 96 square units. It says optional because uh, 16 and 12, this text field, text field can also contain nil values or empty. Now, how do we correct that? What we can do is put an exclamation point and another improvement is we can uh, we can control the next line of the text let's say in the first line of the text the area of the triangle with a base with a base of so we can put new line here backslash and meaning this base would be written on the next line with a base of this units and a height let's escape this also to a new line with a height of height is then escape and escape n to add two 
lines or it's like when you press enter when you are typing in Microsoft Word this backslash n is equivalent to enter meaning you are going to the next line let's see how it looks like so the area of the triangle with a base of 12 units and a height of, one, of 11 units is 66 square units. So, so far, our app is working.